So, Amy, what book have you decided to read with us today? I'm going to read The Girl of Ink and Stars. Okay, and have you just started reading that, or are you in the I've middle of it? i just started reading it. Okay, and why did you decide to pick this book? I decided to pick it because it's the image of a girl, and yet it, it has an image of a girl, and yet has wildlife all around it and stars in the middle. Okay, so what made you interested in that? I don't know, it's the way that they showed the image so that it looks like the girl has trees, mountains, forests and bugs coming out of her. Okay, so making predictions is a really important part of reading. Based on the front cover and the name of the book, can you make any predictions as to what is going to ha what you think might happen? I think it's definitely going to be about wildlife, but um, I think because of the word ink in it, I think she might be a bit um, like a writer, maybe. Okay. And what about the stars? Um, I don't know. Maybe she's adventurous because the stars are far away from us. Maybe she's a bit adventurous. Lovely. Okay, let's do some reading. Find out. Chapter one. They say the day the governor arrived, the ravens did too. All the smaller birds flew backwards into the sea, and that is why there are no songbirds in Joya, only huge, ragged ravens. I'd watch them perch on the rooftops like omens and try to squint them into the chaffinches and world crests Da drew from Da drew from memory. If I'd imagine hard enough, I could almost hear them singing. Why did the song songbirds leave Da? I'd ask. I'd ask. Because they could, Isabella. And the wolves, the deer, Dar's face would darken. Seems the sea was better than what, than what they were running from. Dar would tell me another story then, about the girl warrior Arinta, or about Joy's mystical past as a floating island, and refused to say more about the wolves and the backwards birds. But I kept asking until the day came when I found my own answers. The morning it began was like any other. I woke in my narrow bed, sunrise just starting to brighten the mud walls of my room. The smell of burnt porridge hung in the air. Dar must be making, must have been up for hours, as it took a long time for the fire to heat the heavy clay pot. I could hear Miss La, our head, scratching about inside my room, seeking out crumbs. She was 13 years old. Same as me, but even though it's young for a person, it's very, very old for a chicken. Her feathers were grey, her mood was black, and even our cat Pep was scared of her. Okay, I'm going to stop you there just for a second. So from that, the very first page that we've read, what can you tell me about... What, how is this book written? What person is it written in? I think it's written in a poor person because it says... What person is it written in? A uh, first person. Okay, how do you know it's first person? Because it says I found my own life. Okay, and what can you tell me about this person's life? Uh, she's quite poor because it said um, that she has mud walls and a clay pot instead of, um, instead of um, a china pot. Okay, how do you know that the main character is a girl? Um, because... Is there any evidence in the text, or are you just uh, guessing? I'm guessing. Why do you think it's a girl? You don't know it? It's fine to say I, I don't, don't know. I don't know. You just think it is a girl, okay? Um, what else can you tell about this character's life? So you said that you think that this person is poor because of the mud wards. What else can you tell about where she lives from what we've already read? She lives in a floating island because that's what um, her dad told her in the first page. Mm -hmm. And um, she... What can you tell about the wildlife on the island? There isn't... And there isn't any wildlife except for ravens. Okay. I wonder why. Let's read on. My tummy rumbled as I stretched my arms. Pep was sprawled, sprawled across my legs and yelled loudly as I sat up. You awake, Isabella? 
Dad called from the kitchen. Morning, Dad. Porridge is ready, a little over ready, in fact. Coming! I eased my legs out and smoothed the cat's rough fur where it had ruffled in the night. Sorry, Pep. He purred and closed his green eyes. I watched my face in the basin uh, by the window. Basin? Basin. Basin? Basin. Is that how you pronounce that? Yes. Is it? Yes. <laughs> what is a basin? A small sink. <laughs> You're right, it is a small sink, but we say basin, not basin. 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 I washed my face in the basin by the window and stuck a tongue out at the reflection in the polished metal above Gabo's bed. Straightening his sheets, dustier every day, but still made. The voice lined, arched next to his pillow, a long, thin, hollow dar had etched for, for us up the walls and over the ceiling. When we pressed our lips to it and whispered, it carried our voices so we could talk, even when we were at each end of the room in our separate beds. Three years now, three years since I sat there, my twin's hand, my twin's hand fire in mine as he faded in the night, fast as a blown out match. But, I, but still I could conjure him, easy as breathing. It would not do to start the day sad. Shaking the thoughts out of my head, I pulled on my school dress. It was as big as it had been six weeks ago. My best friend Luke would laugh. Still the shortest in the class, she'd say. Okay, I'm going to read one more chapter and then we're going to stop. I quickly braided my unbrushed hair and hoped Dar, Dar wouldn't notice I'd, I hadn't untangled it all summer. Pep was ro rolling out of bed, but I wasn't allowed to stroke him with my uniform, uniform on. My teacher, Senor Fellis, Ooh. Senora, girl. Senora Fellis, was always picking my ginger, picking ginger hairs off my dress with irritated fingers. Okay, stop there for me. Beautifully read. Well done. Apart from Basin. Basin. <laughs> Close enough. Well done. Okay. Now, obviously, summary is a really, really important skill uh, when we're reading. Being able to tell in your own words what it is that you've read. So, can you retell for me what we've just read in this book? So, where the uh, governor arrived um, in the past and all the animals ran away except for ravens mm -hmm. and she'd been always wondering about the answers of why and um, and then she found her own answers and that day she woke up um, went and got some porridge and um, it got ready for school. Okay, is there anything else that we find out about her life? Um, so you've already talked about the fact that you think that she's quite poor. She has... If it's a she, we're not sure yet. She has, yeah, because it's if a fella. Oh yeah, good point. And um, she has a cat and a hen. Mm -hmm. What about um, this bit here? Why doesn't she, she want to start the day sad? What is she thinking about? Because her twin passed away. How do you know that, he, that her twin passed away? What because evidence is there in the text? Because it said, um, three years since I sat there, my twin's hand in mine as he faded into the night. Okay, so could that mean anything else other than, that? could you mm. say passed away, but could it mean anything else? Maybe it means he ran away, got kidnapped maybe, because maybe um, he faded into the night, someone took him okay. in the night. But you think it's that he passed away? Yeah. Okay, right, so before we finish, well done, thank you for that. Um, can you make any predictions as to what you think will happen next? I don't know, but somehow she's going to find out why the animals left her, so she's definitely going to go on an adventure, I think. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Amy. Okay.